All right, let's go. I'm gonna show you seven automations using a car's FB2 millimeter wave sensor. And I guarantee that at least two of these automations you've never seen before because they use GPT. Special thanks to Akara for sponsoring this video. Almost every creator that I've seen talk about the FP2 has hyped it up. So my expectations were kind of high. And when Akara sent me the devices, I was excited to try it out and especially try out some of my elaborate ideas. Turning off and on lights by walking and sitting in different areas was all I've seen from most creators. And this is no shade on them. Being able to control lights with that type of granularity is amazing, but real talk, I felt like there had to have been more. After playing around with FP2 for a few weeks, here are seven automations you can try that ain't your mama's automations. In a previous video, I talked about a scary moment where my three-year-old daughter vanished from her room and was found wandering outside by herself with no supervision. That incident led me to create an automation that alerts us if she escapes when she's supposed to be in bed. Now, this automation was reliable, but it had a few flaws. For example, if she were to throw a toy on the floor after the automation was enabled, it would falsely trigger that automation. However, with FP2, I can set up a zone for my kid's bed, so the only time the guardian automation triggers is when her presence is absent from the bed. But the benefits don't stop there though. Nope, 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 nope. Another major flaw that this original automation had was that if we forgot to disable it before going into our daughter's room, it would just falsely trip. Now, if we were scaling horizontally, we could purchase a door sensor, for instance, so opening the door would momentarily disable the sensor and then closing it would automatically re-enable it. Because FP2 can vertically scale, we can use it and basically use its ability to observe presence in very specific places of the room, which means that we wouldn't incur a penalty for entering and leaving the space because it's not watching all of the room, it's just watching where our child is. Additionally, I can take advantage of FP2's light sensor to automatically enable the guardian automation based off of the amount of light that's in the room. So for instance, if the room is dark, i.e., you know, she's going to bed, it'll automatically activate. And then if there's light, it can deactivate. These next set of ideas are really out of pocket, and I was inspired by the late attraction at Disney's Epcot Center's Agent P's World Showcase Adventure. It's a mouthful. So I've talked about this attraction before, as I believe that they use webhooks to trigger automations. However, if you're not familiar with this attraction, the premise is that you're given access to a special website that presented clues that led you to real world locations within Disney World. At these locations, you could find answers to riddles which would trigger funny and surprising Easter eggs or automations in the real world. And what made this fun was that only those doing the particular adventure knew what was going on, and they knew that they were the cause of those automations. To everyone else, this was either magic or some random Disney thing. Now, we can do something similar using FP2. For example, a practical Easter egg may be to activate the house alarm by sitting or standing in a particular area for a specific amount of time between a certain time window. Secret event activated. The alarm will now set to away mode. So this is practical in the sense that the actions you choose could be specific to that of when you leave the house. So it triggers intentionally, but would seem like magic to everyone else. And we can technically even incorporate GPT. A silly Easter egg, for example, could be entering and exiting a space repeatedly within a short interval of time. For instance, you know, you let's say forgot something and you walk in and out of a room trying to remember what's going on. We can use FP2 to monitor how you're moving through the space. And then we can tell GPT to say something funny or sassy in response to you aimlessly wandering throughout the house. Hey, you playing hide and seek with the door or are you practicing for a marathon? Make up your mind. We can even go for broke and make a game out of the occupancy sensor. So let's say that you can start the automation with, let's say, a press of a button. GPT can create multiple choice questions and provide, let's say, two fake answers and one real answer. You can then use Home Assistant to randomize those answers and assign an answer to a different FP2 zone.
Once a person stands in the zone, a short countdown timer will start. And then at the end of the timer, Home Assistant can announce the correct answer. And then those standing in the correct zone wins. This is especially fun if the zones are spaced throughout the house, or you can technically restrict the zones to let's say public areas of the house and use it as a party game. Now, if these automations hit different, I'm gonna need you to hit that like button and subscribe button because bro, this is what we do in this channel, man. I created this channel as a way to explore the path less traveled when it comes to tech. And sometimes I run into dead ends and sometimes I feel like I discovered a new element, but in either case, it's the journey that I enjoy. So if this is something that you're into, Subscribe and come along. Okay, here's another example of vertical scaling capabilities that FP2 has. And all it needs is clever logic to help it take the place of other sensors. So let's take a look at, let's say, bed sensors. If, like myself, you don't have one and you need to detect if someone has left the bed, you can create a zone over the bed. Now, when you get out of bed, FP2 can trigger an automation like, for instance, turning on soft flow lights. This is like the typical automation that I see other creators do. Now you can do that with just the FP2. And this is what I like about the FP2. It's so versatile that I can squeeze a lot of use cases out of it. It's just fantastic. And another thing that makes a sensor extremely useful is how well it pairs with other sensors, which brings me to ES Presence. You can combine the FP2 with ES Presence to create a smooth, tailor-made experience to enhance the quality of existing automations. Instead of viewing FP2 as a trigger, we can shift our gaze and improve existing automations by treating it as a condition instead. Take my bedtime routine. This automation will turn off the lights, set the alarm, adjust the thermostat, read upcoming events, and play music. All of this is triggered via webhook when I plug in my phone at night. Now, this is a fantastic S-tier automation. However, there are situations I found where it would trigger too early. Like for instance, when my phone is dying. By combining FP2 with ES Presence, I can now add the following conditions. Trigger the automation if ES Presence detects that the phone is in the master bedroom and if FP2 detects that I've been in bed for over 30 minutes. Now I can freely plug in my phone anywhere in the house without worrying about prematurely triggering this bedtime routine if my phone is dying. And the same thing applies for my wake up routine, which basically wakes up my daughter, turns off the alarm, adjusts the thermostat, and all of this happens when I unplug my phone in the morning. So. I can add a condition that can wait until I exit the bed to trigger the routine instead. In previous videos, I've talked about ES presence based subflows that enables you to locate where a person is in a house and send announcements to those specific areas or to specific people. But what I didn't mention about these sensors is that they can provide GPT with specific information that can help it make better decisions. I use Telegram to communicate with Kay. Oh, additionally, I am currently in the office. Let's basically tell Kay to turn on the lights. I'm not going to say to turn on the office lights. I'm just going to say turn on the lights. And we should see that only the office lights turn on. We're going to look at all the lights. We can see that this light is on and nothing else. So we're going to turn off this light. Let's try it out. To make it more interesting, I'm not even gonna say turn on the lights. I'm just gonna say it's dark in here. Let's see how it responds. Look at that. Look at that. It turned on all these lights. Let's see if it only did it to the office though. The only light on is the office. Now with FP2, I can get interesting insights. So I posted a while back about how I used ES Presence to add more context to GPT. So that way GPT could actually be a little bit more concise with how it ran my house. And with that, it was able to actually turn on and off lights in the area that I existed in, which was great. That's the millimeter wave or the Cara FP2, which uses millimeter waves to track where a person is within a room. And it does it very specifically. Like you can actually see in real time, right, right here, how as I move through the space, it can track where you are. Now that I have this level of observation, I can now make GPT even smarter. Technically, my system knows the last time I was in the living room, even though no one is currently there now. So I can ask it a question like this. When was the last time someone was in the living room? Oh, oh man. So that is 
freaky. As I'm recording this, it is 344. This opens up some very interesting discussions such as data mining your family's habits and using AI to generate automations that it learns based off of those habits. But that discussion is for another video and if you're interested in that type of discussion just let me know in the comments now is fp2 perfect nothing is perfect there are definitely features that i wish it had and i thought it would have but it was a little disappointing to see that it wasn't there for instance i thought that it would have the ability to tell me the distance an entity is away from the sensor technically it, it knows this information but it's just not available and i can see the complications with trying to show this information but it would still be very nice to have that at my disposal because knowing the distance can help build exceptional nuance and granularity into automations that we create. But one of the features I wished most that the FP2 had is revealing the number of people it detects. And it's kind of weird because FP2 technically knows the number of people that's within the space because you can see it on their graph, but it doesn't really show that information to us. It just gives us some binary status as someone's there or someone's not there. An automation trigger like this would give FP2 a way to further personalize and simplify automations. For example, sending a notification if the number of people detected in a space exceeds an expected threshold. There's so much that you can do with just those two particular um, data points, but uh, maybe they can roll that out in a new feature update. Who knows? The last thing is that it often gets a bit glitchy and create ghosts as I've seen people refer to them as, or it just doesn't detect people at all. This I'm assuming happens if you're in front of something or in an area that has a lot of interference. Um, and Nakara does provide a way to reset the status of the app and add interference zones, which can help reduce these occurrences. I've tried it, it seems to work, but it's just something I figured I should call out because it did catch me off guard. But technically, for what it does and for what this device can currently do, I really like it. It's very versatile and can take the place of many different sensors. So if you wanna try it out, check out the affiliate link in the description. Using this link helps support this channel and at no extra cost to you guys. I really do appreciate the support that you guys give as it does make these videos possible. A lot of you guys have clever ideas. So let me know what automations you have using the FP2 or automations you would like to explore if you had the FP2. If you liked any of these videos ideas, I think you're going to really love this seven epic automations ideas. And trust me, a lot of these ideas hit hard. Or you can check out the five automation ideas that I had back when I first joined this community. That video is going to be very cringy, at least to me. But um, the ideas in there are very solid. Okay, bye.